Good morning, Life Church kids. Good morning, Life Church kids. Believe it or not, we are having children's church again. We've got a whole room full of children. If your parents are still needing to stay home, again, I invite you to join us on Facebook, Life Church Kids. And if you guys don't have access to it, come see any of the four people on the board there, and we'll make sure that you get access. But if your parents are comfortable coming to church, come on. We've got Children's Church again, live, in class, 11 o'clock every week. Welcome, you guys. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Today's lesson is about Gideon. Now, we just saw the video, and, it, and hopefully those of you who are still at home, you've seen the video also that's been posted. But Gideon was a man of Israel. And at this time, Israel had no king. They didn't have anybody. They didn't have, now do we have a king? No. Do we have a king here in the United States? No. We don't, do we? No, but we do have one, God. We have King God, but who, who leads our government? The president. The president. And we don't have a president for life like like a lot of countries do. You know, when, when they had kings, the king would rule as long as he was alive. And then when he died, then the next person would come and be king or queen. And uh, we don't do it like that. We elect every four years, and we don't allow people to serve more than two terms. But that's just us. Israel had no king. They had no governor. Anybody know who our governor is? Doug Ducey. Doug Ducey. All right, governor of Arizona. And we only allow our governor to serve just a short period of time. But Israel didn't have anybody like that. They didn't have a mayor. Does anybody know who our mayor is? That depends on what city you live in. That depends on what city you live in. If you live in Phoenix, you have one mayor. If you live in Chandler, you have another mayor. If you live in Tempe or Glendale, you have a different mayor. But Israel didn't have any of that. And the Bible says that every man did what was right in his own eyes. Now, what did they have that they had to follow after? No, they didn't have a king. Do you guys know what they had? What, what gave them the rules to follow after? The Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments. They had the Ten Commandments that guided what they did. And also the all the laws that came from the Ten Commandments. And so that's what, and God left it up to each person to decide what to do, what was right. As long as they followed the law, they were, they were good in God's eyes. But Israel could not... Obey God. And you're going to find that that's a problem that happens all the time. Now, what I want to ask you, and those of you who are watching from home, those of you who are here, if you're going to, I want, you, I want to ask you to be completely honest with me. Those of you who are home, I want you to be completely honest. Raise your hands if you've ever disobeyed your parents. Of course we have. Mm hmm Hopefully every hand should be up except Miss Faith because she's got to have two two hands to uh, operate the camera. I'll be her hand. Every one of us has disobeyed. But here's the problem. Israel could not obey God. They, they knew better, but they didn't do it. And what would happen is that sometimes they were good and sometimes they were obeying God. And when that happened, God would prosper them. Now, do you, do you know what it means to prosper? Do you know what it means to prosper? How about you? Do you know what it means to prosper? Do you know what it means to prosper? What is it? Do you know what it means to prosper? Um, <clears throat> like move forward? Move forward? Yeah, kind of. It means to do well. When you go to your job, and you're prospering, that means that you're getting paid more and more. When you go to, when you're in school and you're prospering, 
What does that mean? That means your grades are getting better and better. You're doing better. You're doing well when you prosper. Now, the, the opposite of prosper is a curse. What happens with a curse? You are not doing well. You get paid less and less, or, or they fire you, or your grades are going down, you fail that test that you really needed to pass. That's what happens when you're, when you're under a curse. When Israel obeyed God, they would prosper. When Israel did not obey God, God brought a curse on them. And they didn't do well. And it was during this time of Gideon that Israel had not been obeying God. And so God brought one of the nations that lived around them. This was a nation that did not fear God. This was a nation that did not serve God. They used to do some terrible things. And the nation was called Midian. Midian. And Midian grew strong. And Midian became stronger than Israel. And Midian sent their soldiers. And they began to capture the Israelites. They began to come in. They began to take all of their food. They began to... to uh, to uh, take their people as slaves they began to exercise rule over the Israelites and the Israel could not do what they wanted to do because Midian was in control and they didn't like it because Midian did not serve God and they weren't being very fair <clears throat> and so finally and this was what would happen this is what would happen is that whenever Israel would disobey God and God would allow bad things to happen to them. And finally, when they had enough of it, they would cry out to God and say, God, please save us. And when the people cried out to God, God, please save us, then God would come in and God would move. God brought Gideon. God said to Gideon, I am going to use you to deliver Israel from the Midianites. And Gideon said, not me. I'm, wait, 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 God, God, I'm not qualified here, okay? Well, first, first of all, first of all, my family is one of the least families in the whole tribe of Manasseh. He was from the tribe of Manasseh, which meant those of you who remember Manasseh was one of the sons of Joseph. And that's the, so Gideon was descended from Joseph. And, and Gideon said, wait a minute, my family is one of the least families in the whole tribe of Manasseh. We're not, we're not very prominent. We're not very powerful. And I'm the youngest. Now, do you remember, do you guys remember who, who seemed to get all the good things when, uh, in Israel? Was it the oldest? Was it the youngest? Was it the middle child? Who got all the best things? The oldest. The oldest did. The oldest did. The oldest did. The oldest did. Who got left out in the cold? The youngest. The youngest. The youngest. The youngest. Well, I forgot to say the oldest. Miss Faith there being the oldest in her family. So that's that was their tradition. If you looked if you wanted to find a ruler, if you wanted somebody to rule to be important, it was going to be the oldest child. But God does things differently. God doesn't do things the way that man does it. God says I'm going to do things my way. And God chose Gideon. Gideon was the youngest in his family. And Gideon was not a very strong man. But God said, Gideon, I want to choose you. Do you know why God does that? Do you guys have any idea why God does that? Why, did, why does he choose weak people to do, his, to do his will? Because what? Because he helps them through it. You see, if I'm a strong guy, if I'm a strong guy, 
and I do something good, I'm going to say, I did it because I'm a strong guy. But if a little guy like this does something great, nobody's going to say, Josiah did it by his strength. Josiah, make a muscle. Can you make a muscle? Show me your muscles. Show me your muscle. Whoa. What a big muscle you got, right? Come here, show, come here, show me your muscle. Come here, Nathaniel, show me, show me, show me your muscle. Boom. Everybody out there is looking at me. You ain't got no muscle. Because if a person is strong and they do something uh, mighty, and they'll say, I did it because I was strong. But when you take a small person and they say nobody could have done it but God, he couldn't have done it on by himself. But God can. God can. God can. It doesn't matter how big or how small you are. When God wants to use you, you let him. Because God will do some great things through you if you let him. And so Gideon was the youngest, and he said, I can't, I can't. But it doesn't matter what we say, because God can. And God said, I want you to lead an army. And Gideon said, oh my goodness, I'm not, how am I going to do that? God, look, God, I, I really need to make sure, guys, guys, sit, sit. And Gideon said, I need to make sure I'm hearing from you, God. I need to be sure I'm hearing from you. I don't want to, look, here's what he was thinking. If he's not hearing from God, he's going to go off and he's going to do this thing that's in his head to do and he's going to fail miserably and he's going to die and he's going to have a lot of people killed with him. He says, I don't want to do that. I want to make sure God that it's you saying this to me. So he took a fleece. Do you know what a fleece is? Does anybody know what a fleece is? Yeah. What is a fleece? Do you know what a fleece is? We don't really know because we aren't around sheep. You know what a sheep is, right? And you know, what does a sheep have all over its body? Wool. Wool. And wool is hard or is it fluffy? Uh, fluffy. Fluffy and soft. 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 And fleece can hold a lot of water. And you saw this on the video. Gideon said, God, I've got this piece of fleece that I'm going to set on the ground. And here's what I want to happen. Let there be dew on the ground or... No, actually, he said, let there be, let the ground be dry and let there be dew on the fleece. Now, that's impossible. Have you ever seen dew on the ground? Does anybody know what? You guys live in Arizona. You don't know too much what dew is, do you? You get up and, and you look outside and the ground is all wet, but it didn't rain. Don, these kids don't know what dew is. They don't know what they're they don't know what they're missing. I know Mountain Dew. You know Mountain Dew. <laughs> okay, now I grew up. I grew up in the Northeast. I grew up in Pennsylvania and in New York. When I I remember when I was a little boy in Pennsylvania, we would get dew all the time. You'd go outside and it hadn't rained, but you go outside and the ground is all wet. And you go walk across the grass and pretty soon your shoes are all wet. But it didn't rain. Why is the ground wet? It's dew. It's because of humidity in the air, and that's why the kids here don't know what that is, because they don't know what humidity in the air, the air is. It's kind of like, have you ever had a glass of water, or soda, or something like that, a nice cold drink, and you got ice in it, mm -hmm. and there's water on the outside of the glass? Mm -hmm. Did you spill? No. no. That's what dew is like. I'm spitting all over the place here. That's what dew is like. The... The water, just like the water, because, uh, uh, because the water condenses out on the outside of the glass, that's, that's what you're seeing on the ground. 
And so you walk through it and your, and your feet get all wet because of all the dew on the ground. And so here's what Gideon said. He said, I want the ground to be dry and I want the fleece to be full of dew. Now that's impossible because when you get dew, if you leave something out, it's going to get wet. Dew goes everywhere. You can't have just one little piece that has dew in it and everything else is dry. That doesn't happen. But this happened. In the morning, the ground was perfectly dry. But when Gideon took the fleece, and you saw it on the video, and he wrung it out, and he filled up a whole bowl full of water. That was God. That was God doing a miracle. But Gideon said, I need to, I need to really make sure. Now listen, we don't doubt God. But God doesn't mind if we make sure. We make sure that we're hearing from him. And God didn't mind Gideon asking God, Hey, God, you know, I, I, I want to make sure I'm hearing from you. God didn't mind that at all. So Gideon said, Look, tomorrow, I'm gonna, I'm, tonight I'm going to put that fleece out again. Tomorrow I want the ground to be full of dew, and I want the fleece to be dry. And that's exactly what happened. And so Gideon knew. Gideon was sure it was God that was calling him. He was sure that God told him to do this. And so he, he changed his I can't to I can. Why? Because God was with him. And he sent out throughout all of Israel. And he said, God is going to deliver us. If you are able to fight, come. If you're able to fight, come. And 32,000 men came. 32,000 men came. That's a whole town. That's a whole city. And God said, too many. There's too many. Why? Because, again... If 32,000 men went out to fight against Midian, they'd say, we did it. We did it all. But God says, I want to get all the credit for this. And so he said to Gideon, he said, you tell the men, whoever's afraid, whoever's afraid to fight, go home. If you're afraid, go home. Don't worry about it. 22,000 men went home. Twenty-two thousand were afraid, and they went home. Math people, how many? How many have we left? Ten thousand. Now he's down to ten thousand. That's still a pretty good army. And God said, "Too many. There's too many of you." Here's what I'm going to have you do. Now, they, they were out marching. And let me tell you this, that, that where Gideon lived was dry, just like it is here. It, it could be very dry there. And so they were tired, and they were thirsty, and they came to water. And God told Gideon, have the men get some water. Now, there were two kind of people. Some of them were so glad to get the water, and I... I if I were feeling better, I would do this, but I'm not going to do this. They got down on their faces, and they put their faces right in the water and started drinking. And there were others that they just kneel down, and they take a little bit of water, and they bring it up to their mouths, and they kept looking around. You see, those were the people that were prepared. The people that just put their faces down into the water. Xander, come here. I want you to pretend you're a guy going to put your face down into the water, okay? And pretend this is water and you're real thirsty. Go get some water. And if I'm an enemy and I come up with a knife, boom! You see, because Xander doesn't see me coming. Xander doesn't see me coming. He was unprepared. But, Josiah, come here. Come here, buddy. 
<laughs> now, you're going to pretend that there's some water and you're really thirsty, but instead of getting down like Xander did, you're going to kneel down and you're going to take the water and bring it up and keep looking around, right? Go ahead and pretend to do that. Kneel down and get some water. You're not going to do it. Okay, go ahead. Come on, Hadassah. Go get yourself some water. Here I come. Oh, she saw me coming. She was prepared. She's prepared to fight. She doesn't have her face down in the water. Good job. God said those people that brought the water up to their mouths that were prepared, those were the people that I want. How many people got down and drank the water like, uh, like Xander did? That many drank the water unprepared. You see, God wants us to listen to him and God wants us to depend on him. However, God also wants us to be prepared. He wants us to be prepared for battle. How many were left, my math people? 300. 300. Really? Really, because you got to take the, you got to borrow, you got to borrow one from the 10. Three hundred were left. God said, "That's the army. That's the army." Now, the number of Midianite soldiers were in the thousands. There were thousands of them, and God took an army of three hundred. You see, God wanted to be sure that everybody knew when He gave Israel the victory, and God was going to give Israel a big victory. He wanted everybody to know that it was his doing, that it was God's doing, and not man's doing. And so God told Gideon, I want you to take your army of 300, and I want you to divide them into three parts. And you put 100 over on this side of them, you put 100 over on this side of them, and you put 100 over on this side of them. They surrounded them. Everybody has a lantern, and everybody has a, a mason jar or a, a, a pottery jar over it. Pottery can be very easily broken. He said, when I give the signal, I want you all to break the pottery. What happens when that happened? What happens when they broke the pottery? What would happen? First of all, could, they see, could people see the light when the pottery was over it? No, they couldn't. What happens when you break the pottery? It shatters. It shatters. Does it make a quiet sound or a loud sound? Loud. Big, loud sound of 300 pots breaking at the same time. And all of a sudden, you see light. There's light everywhere. It's all around you. And when God gave the signal, and Gideon gave the signal to his army, and they all broke the pottery and shone the lights, all of a sudden, you have this terrible sound. Now, the Midianite army was asleep. Have you ever been woken out of sleep? You're sleeping. And all of a sudden, there's a bam, loud sound. Yeah. What happens? You wake up, and you don't know where you are, right? Maybe you start thrashing around in your covers. You're laughing like you've done that. You're thrashing around in your covers, and what happens? Your covers always tangle. Now you're kicking and you're... You're stuck. The Midianite army is asleep. All of a sudden they hear this dreadful crash of 300 pots breaking at the same time. All around them. And they wake up and they see all this light. And they think, oh no, it's a huge army. And they start thrashing. They're looking around. They're trying to get their swords. They're trying to, and they see somebody and they don't know who it is. They take swords and they start slashing. Except they're killing their own people. They're killing their own people. 
How does God win a battle with only 300 men? He makes them fight themselves. God makes them fight themselves. God gave Israel a great victory that day. Now, did Gideon do anything? Gideon did a little bitty thing. He obeyed God. And that little bitty thing, God changed into a big, huge thing. You see, when we obey God, just that little act of obedience, God is going to take your act of obedience and he's going to do great things with it. If we will obey God, if we will listen to God, he will do great things with us. Even at a small age. Nathaniel, how old are you? How many are you? Three? How old are you, Josiah? You're four. Five. Xander, how old are you? Six. Almost seven. I mean, December, right? Girls, how old are you? He's almost nine. Nine? You're going to be ten soon? How old are you? Eleven. Eleven. How old are you? Twelve. I'm not going to ask you. Thank you. It doesn't matter. She's 29 and holding. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how young you are. Because it's the same God. The same God. God can use anybody. And God will use anybody. If you will obey God, God will use you to do great things. And when God uses you to do great things, people are going to come up to you and they're going to say, Oh, you did such a great thing. Oh, you did such a wonderful thing. How great are you? Here, I'm going to bow down to you. I'm going to bow down to you. And you say, No, because I didn't do it. God did it. You see, afterward, they came to Gideon. They said, Gideon, you did such a great job. Oh, Gideon, you're a hero. Come on, Gideon, we're going to make you... <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to make you a king. We want you to be our king, Gideon. And Gideon said, no, 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 no. No. God does not want me to be the king. God will rule over you, not me. So he refused. Gideon did the right thing. God wants to use you. God wants to use you. What do you need to do for God to use you? What do you need to do for God to use you? I'm kind of try that again. There we go. What do you need to do for God to use you? Go ahead. No. Four letters. Pray. Well, that'll, that'll happen, but you need to, you can pray all you want, but God still won't use you unless you do this one thing. Obey. But I'll tell you, obey. There it is. God wants you to obey. If you will obey God, if you will obey God, God will use you to do great things. And it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how young you are. It doesn't matter if you're three or if you're more than three. God will use you if you obey him. If you obey him, God will use you. tell you about somebody who obeyed God. God said, I'm going to use you to take away the sins of the world. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to die. I want you to be killed. And he said, yes, Father, I will do it. His name is Jesus. Because Jesus obeyed his father. We all have life. We don't have to do sacrifices anymore. He became the final sacrifice for sin. Because Jesus obeyed God. We have life. Jesus was willing to die 
so that we could have life. But you see, it wasn't enough for Jesus to die. God raised him again. And so Jesus isn't sitting in a tomb anywhere. He's not sitting in the grave. He came out of that grave. God called his name and he came out of that grave. Into a glorious day. I like that. I like that song. That was a very appropriate song for this morning. Jesus is alive. Because he obeyed God. He obeyed God all the way to the cross. That was not a fun thing for him, but he still obeyed God. I want to encourage every one of you, obey God. In everything you do, <laughs> obey God. God will be with you, God will use you, and God will get all the glory. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all of your goodness toward us. Lord, we thank you because you because you made a way, and you don't care whether we are strong or weak. You don't care whether we're mighty or not. You don't care whether we're adults or children. You don't care whether we're boys or girls, because it's all about you anyway. Father, I ask you to help us to obey you in everything that we do, to obey you, so that you may use us, and so that you may use us, Lord, to get glory in this earth. We love you, Lord, and we will obey. We will hear from you and we will obey. I ask you to give us strength to do that, Lord. And we thank you and we praise you. Now as we go our separate ways to our homes, I pray that you be with us. And that you would guide us and keep us. And bring us back again into your house rejoicing. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, we are still having the online. But come, join us. Come join us in class. We're open again, 11 o'clock every Sunday. God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Amen.